Hi everybody, Sarah here at the Big Blue House Homestead. Apologize, the kitchen's a little messy because it's right after breakfast and I haven't cleaned up. But I am working with, I'm trying to get them without dropping them. This is a smaller one, but I'm working with fennel today. I just harvested all of this out of my um, garden beds up front and I'm gonna show you how to process fennel and what you can do with it. It's a very beneficial ingredient to have in your cabinets and your pantries. It's also excellent for teas. You can eat it fresh. So we're going to do a little fennel prep. First things first, I'm going to get myself a bowl. That way I can move the bulbs because I have to cut all, all of this fronting off. Now, if you see this one, that's a nice looking fennel. I'm getting wet. It's still misty because I didn't dry it all the way. But this one, look at that. Ah, it's dropping the little baby too. I had little side shoots. I didn't realize they threw off pups. But look, check this out. It's like a headdress. Isn't that beautiful? And it's wet and I'm getting wet, but I don't care because this is the biggest bulb of fennel I have grown in a long time. And I'm so excited to be able to process this today. So with that being said, I've got my bowl. I'm going to get myself a pair of scissors and a nice small knife. And we're going to get to cutting and chopping and showing you what to do with fennel. Okay, so first things first, <clears throat> like I said, it threw off some little pups. So I don't eat the top parts like most people do because I actually like to dehydrate them. So I just come through and clip that section off. And I'll set that to the side and this can be eaten fresh. I don't cut my ends off yet until I go to eat them, but I'm just gonna show you on this small one. All you need to do is cut off the end. And that's where it attached in the dirt to the actual root. Uh, you can kind of see some of that little space there, but that gives me nice, fresh fennel. Oh my goodness, this stuff is so good. So I'm going to munch on that, <laughs> but I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in my bowl. I'm going to put this piece in the compost and then clip down the rest of these heads. Now, it's a little bit of a pain to do this because it's so intertwined and so big. I tell myself every year that I grow fennel that I'm going to tie these back, keep them a little more, you know, compacted so it's not just, just a ginormous fan of fennel frond. But I never do. I never, ever, ever do. Even these little small pieces that are coming up, those are new shoots. I'm going to go ahead and cut those off too. Because like I said, that's not stuff I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat the bulb of fennel and use this for other stuff. So I'm just going to keep coming through with a pair of scissors and clipping them. Okay, so I've got the head pretty much trimmed up the way I want. I've got a couple other little bad pieces on here. I'm going to trim those out. And I'm going to end up cutting all this part away. So I'm not so much worried about this root ball that's formed on the bottom. I can pull all this out if I need to. But that's what I've got is just a big bulb of fennel. Okay, so I've got all of the fronting trimmed off. And I do want to tell you that if you have these that are light yellow, that's not as good. It's not as fresh. Uh, something actually damaged this or it was malnourished. And so I don't keep those. I keep the really dark leafy green part, not the light yellows. So remove any of that. And so I've got my bowl of fennel here and all my fronds. And now I get to do the fun part, which is getting it ready for the dehydrator. So I'll show you what I do and how I get those trays ready. Okay, this is a massive amount to go through on camera. So I'm just gonna grab a small handful here. So it's up to you, the choice that you wanna do for your dehydrator trays. Mine are metal racks because I have a squared big system. I can put down parchment paper, not wax paper, parchment paper. And I just cut a sheet that's kind of the same size and put it down. And that's because I only have one of these trays that actually came with my system. And it looks like the cross stitch netting but you want to put something down because you don't want all of this to fall through because what I'm actually going to do is basically come through and wherever the frond stops I'm going to trim that and just lay it onto my dehydrator and move my stems to the side now looking at ones like this I'm going to have to make a couple different cuts But I just want to trim it all down because we're going to have the leafy frond, the sprigs, and then we're going to have the stems separate. 
And so you can also just break these off with your finger if you want to, but I find it doesn't tear as easy sometimes, so I just like to come with a pair of scissors. Um, but yeah, you just want to get your trays filled up, get off as much as you can, and then we're going to slice up some of these stems and show you what that's for. But I only put a layer like this. A lot of people will, you know, separate it out into even rows. It's all going to dehydrate about the same, and it's all going to be for the same purpose. So I don't have to worry about separating, and I would recommend you don't either. Just kind of throw it on your trays to get it done, because that was a lot of fennel fraud to deal with. <laughs> okay, so I am just cutting up my fennel stems because I am going to make a fennel powder. I like to use fennel powder in a lot of things. Um, it's especially great for making sausage. When you don't have fennel seed on hand, fennel powder does just the same, and there's a lot of people that just use fennel powder. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm also gonna be able to use it in teas. So for now, we're just gonna get it in the dehydrator, and you basically cut it like you would a carrot. Longer sections on the top, and then as it gets fatter, just shorten it down some. And that way, it's almost like even ratio as you go to put this in your dehydrator. Now the stems are going to take a lot longer to dehydrate than the actual frond part is. Um, so I do them on separate trays for that purpose and that way as one finishes I can pull it out. But I go ahead and turn my dehydrator on at this point and it's already warm and I've got one tray in. And then what I do is I set it to 125. I like it to be on a, a low, slow type of uh, dehydration level. And that way it comes out the, basically the same way you would with your herbs, if you dehydrate your herbs in a food dehydrator. So I've got these all laid out on my tray. It's gonna take me a few more to actually fill this up. But you can kind of see the spacing I'm putting. I'm making sure everything has some even room so that there's a lot of airflow. And I'm just going to process the rest of these as much as I can and go ahead and fill up that dehydrator. I'm not sure exactly how long it's going to take because it's different for the stems and the fronds. My hands smell so good. First of all, if you don't know what fennel is, fennel is an excellent herb. It can be eaten fresh. It can be eaten, like I said, as a powder form to season foods. And it can be used in teas. It has a very licorice flavor to it. Uh, if you're not a fan of licorice, Try it anyway. Um, it might be a little bit different for you, but it's not like black, black licorice. It's just a kind of sort of reminiscent of it, but it smells beautiful. So good. And it's good, like I said, for teas. It's good for sausage. You can put it in cookies. You can use it as seasoning powders in your soups. A lot of times when you get a good like tomato sauce, they put fennel seed in it. And that'll give you that little bit of that pop of sweet and licorice flavor. And so you can use fennel powder in the same way and just put it in your sauces to give it the same flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this processed because I have this entire thing back here. And I still have a bunch on the counter and it's going to take me a little while. And then we'll get that in the dehydrator. Now it's going to take me probably, I would say on average, about six hours for the fronds. It could take up to eight or ten. And then for the stems, it's probably going to take about eight to twelve. It depends on your dehydrator, and you can tell, honestly, the best way how you can tell that it's dehydrated is just to pick up one of these fat stems and try to break it. Once it snaps, it's done. Or you can just bite it. And if it tastes like dried woody fennel, then you know it's dehydrated. So let me get this all processed, and when it's all done, I'll come back and I'll show you how to make the fennel powder. Okay, so it actually took me two batches to dry all the fennel out. And I'm wearing a glove because I've got a band-aid on and I don't want that in my fennel. So what I'm doing, I'm showing you the fennel. These are all these little stem pieces and they've dried down pretty, you know, small. They're nothing near what they were. And then I've got all the fronds that are completely dried. I just put them all into a bowl and I'm just going to take it and use my hands and just crush them up because it's going to be a lot easier to put in a lot of crush components than trying to fit in these big sheets. <laughs> so I'm just going to crush it down as much as I can naturally. And then I've got my spice grinder over here and I've got a measuring cup to scoop. I've got a funnel to put it into my jars and I reuse my jars. So I have a larger one and then a smaller one. And this one I'll put in my actual spice cabinet where the other one I'll use to store for what I make you know, bulk amounts of sausage and things like that. It's not going to give me a ginormous amount of powder. This is not something that's going to give you, you know, 
a year's supply, so to speak, but it's enough to work with. I'm gonna make sure I get all of the powder off. Now, I just use a regular spice grinder. You could probably do this in your food processor. Um, it might not grind down as small, but I'm just gonna go in and get an average size scoop so I don't spill it everywhere, and I'm gonna keep adding until my spice grinder is pretty much full. And if you've not used a spice grinder before, the, I find the more you fill it, the better it actually works out. Um, it gives it more room for things to spin and incorporate. So I just fill mine up almost to the top. And I'm going to put my lid on and just grind it. I can also warn you, when you use a spice grinder, it does create a lot of powder. So if you have sensitive sinuses like I do... You can wear a mask. I just tend to take the lid off and walk away and let the air kind of dissipate before I mess with it. But you're basically just grinding until there's no more noise. And I just tap down as much of the powder as I can. Now it's not gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little colander strainer to, or a sieve, that's what I call them. And that way I can get out any of the extra chunks. I'm gonna put my funnel in. And lay my little sieve over the top and just kind of shake it in. And then I'm just going to tap with my hand until it all comes out. And you'll notice chunks, and that's what we're trying to do is get a powder, not a chunked, you know, mix. And then all the chunks I just put right in and just continue to grind. But you can see how many chunks I still have in there. There's a lot more that needs to be done with this. So I'm just going to process it all and I'll show you what I have at the end. Okay, and so I'm at the end. This is the last little bit. I scraped my bowl completely clean because I did not want to waste it. And I got myself a spoon to come through and scrape out as much as I can that's stuck to the inside. Uh, I try not to waste anything when it comes to what I grow in my garden, just mainly because I grew it and I'm going to utilize it and I'm going to use it. So I will scrape every inch, if that's what it means. But it is weird. It's a very bright green powder. It's probably very off-putting for a lot of people. That realization is, is it is pure fennel flavor. And fennel's very good for you. It's good as a culinary herb. Throwing it into sauces or putting it into um, sausage like I plan to do. Um, so you get your Italian sausage flavors from is having some fennel in there. So it's good for that. It's good for your health when you use it for digestion. If you have any sort of you know stomach issues, fennel's excellent for that. It's also really good for your brain. <laughs> it boosts a lot of the um, neurosystem stuff to make your brain function a lot better. So when you're you know tired and uh, like I am today, best thing to do is just add a little fennel to your tea, and then there you go. So. It's also got cancer fighting properties and it's good for your heart health and high cholesterol and blood pressure and all sorts of stuff. So it's an all natural wonder food, I guess you would say. But what I'm doing is I'm just getting the last of this out of my sieve and any of these chunks that are left, I'll probably just use in a tea later. Uh, Cause yeah, like I said, I'm a little, uh, so I'd like some tea, but I'm tapping out as much of it as I can, making sure I get every inch of this powder because I'm going to use this all up. All right, so there you have it. A jar of mm, so delicious smelling fennel powder. And again, it's good for culinary use. It's also good for your teas, for your, you know, system in your body and your health. And it's beneficial because I did not waste all of that fennel frond and stem that I had left over. And I can use this for a while. So I'm going to put this on my shelf, and that's one more thing I added to my pantry this year was fresh fennel powder. And when I go to make sausage, I'll put up a video for that to show you how I make homemade sausage. So thank you guys for stopping by, and I hope this helped you out. And I encourage you to please make sure you use every inch from your garden and utilize as much as you can and save these old jars because then you can use your mason jars for something else like canning food instead of storing powders. So thank you guys, and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye.